What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I do hope you lot are all doing well. And welcome to today's video, which is a, uh, what is this? This is a match preview to Chelsea's home game against Sheffield United in the Premier League. But before we do get into today's video, I want to request that you guys do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload content on this channel every single day. I don't want anyone to miss out on any content. So subscribe and if you want to help me out, you can like this video. Yes indeed, Chelsea are playing Sheffield United at home at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. The Blades. Sheffield secured automatic promotion into the Premier League last season by finishing second in the Championship. And as a team, they are no mugs. They're resolute and they play pretty interesting football. Quite like all the promoted teams into the Premier League this season, no one's really just sitting back and playing too rigid. Every single promoted team have got an interesting proposition for the opposition. God, that rhymed and that was awful. Regardless, they are interesting. And since Chris Wilder's last post-match interview, we know he expects maximum effort, putting a shift in every game, no matter what, which is pretty funny, but yeah, of course you'd expect your team to put a shift in. But they're an interesting side and we're gonna get into that, so let's bring up the analysis page. So, how will the Blades line up? Well, probably a 3-5-2 formation. As you can see on the graphic next to me, I've put up the lineup that they fielded last time out against Leicester City. That was an interesting game between Sheffield and Leicester, and you know what? The statistics were pretty much shared down the middle. I know they lost the game 2-1 to Leicester, but in terms of possession, passes, shots, etc, pretty much even, which is no small feat against a decent side like Leicester City, as Chelsea recently learned. The interesting thing about Sheffield United in the Premier League this season, well certainly what's interesting in the Premier League is, Wilder employs a system that uses overlapping centre-backs. I know, right? Weird. But pretty cool. Certainly interesting. So, in the back system, the outside centre-backs get into a position where essentially they're afforded the opportunity to advance forward and overlap. There's a lot of shape-shifting in possession where midfielders move, wing-backs move, um, and essentially the, <laughs> the uh, outside centre... As you can see, tactical genius here, the outside centre-backs advance forward. Now, it is quite complicated, it's certainly very interesting. If you want to learn about this, I do recommend you go and check out Statman Dave's video he did on the overlapping centre-backs, where he explains it a lot better than I ever could. Certainly unconventional from Sheffield United, and that's interesting because when someone does something unconventional or not generally done for a while or something in the Premier League, it often rocks opponents. Just look back to when Antonio Conte deployed his 3-4-3 in the Premier League. I think for the previous few years, only one team had used that formation. I'm not saying Conte invented the 3-4-3, but it certainly unsettled the opposition in the league for that first season where he deployed it. I'm pretty sure this is the first time this Chelsea side will be facing opposition that employ a sort of radical or a tactic that's a bit different like that, but you'd hope Frank Lampard and his coaching staff have done appropriate research on this and have enough experience to hammer into the Chelsea players what to expect, what to do and what not to do. So expect Sheffield to defend well and when in possession, try their radical overlapping centre-back system to try and confuse and pull Chelsea out of shape. But how will Chelsea line up? Well, let's switch the graphic to the Chelsea starting 11, or potential 11. So it does look like Frank Lampard is settling in with the 4-3-3 in the Premier League. He wants to employ the 4-2-3-1, the formation that he played most under Jose Mourinho, and probably the formation that's just been with him the most throughout his playing career. The 4-2-3-1 will allow Frank Lampard to have more of a direct pressing game which he wants to have in his Chelsea side but at the moment in terms of the competition what the players are used to and a little bit more security I guess he'll probably go for the 4-3-3. Unlike the 4-2-3-1 the 4-3-3 helps Lampard's Chelsea keep a little bit more compact and although there was been issues with space between the lines um, that's less of an issue with this 4-3-3 because this current Chelsea side is so well drilled um, in the 4-3-3 that they played under Maurizio Sarri. They move around as a unit a lot better. 
uh, play a high line a bit easier, therefore leaving less space between the lines as they do when they try to play the 4-2-3-1. So who's going to start? Well, firstly, although hudson Adoy is fit, yeah, I don't think we'll see him be reintroduced to the side until after the international break when he's up to the athletic fitness that Frank Lampard requires. But I still do think there's a chance we'll see Antonio Rudiger. He's been fit for a while and I thought we might see him away at Norwich due to the competition but I think after playing at Norwich Frank obviously respects them as a really difficult opponent after playing them last season when they won the championship. I feel like this might be a good game for Rudiger to come into. It's at home and it's against Sheffield United. It really isn't going to become easier than that for a game to be reintroduced to the side to. Do you know what I mean? Again you could argue yes he could be after the international break be brought back in after more training but he's fit and this might be the perfect game to bring him in so I think Antonio Rudiger might start. It's looking like N'Golo Kante is still injured but although that's frustrating I feel like bringing in Mateo Kovacic again after his great performance last time out will be no issue for Frank Lampard and he probably like I've previously stated wants to wrap cotton wool around N'Golo Kante and make sure he doesn't do him any further damage in relation to his injury. So I expect the midfield to consist of Jorginho, Kovacic and Mason Mount again which can switch from the 4-3-3 to a 4-2-3-1 with Mason Mount playing in either the 10 or left centre mid. And when it comes to the wingers I expect Pulisic to be partnering either Willian or Pedro. Pedro had a little tight hamstring last time out but maybe he'll come back in, maybe even Willian although Willian has been pretty poor but again this is the type of game for him to be reintroduced and try and prove his form and his worth in that side so not too convincing but I imagine he'll start. Another interesting talking point is Chelsea's striker now you'd imagine Tammy Abraham will get the nod yet again as Chelsea's number nine and to continue his good form after last time out where he grabbed himself a delicious brace and he'd fancy scoring another goal at home against Sheffield. Hopefully Giroud's happy with this. He did come out recently and make some comments about how his role at the club is to be a sort of role model and figure for the younger strikers, which is great to hear. I hope he's happy with that um, role within the club. And of course, he'll still have an important part to play on the pitch at times as well. All right, well, let's talk a bit more about what Chelsea need to do to win this game. So let's get rid of the analysis screen. First off, more of the same from the Chelsea midfielders and forwards. People like Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount continue their sort of, I guess, mental positive mentality, high confidence, good form, hopefully. Come home to the bridge after their good performance last time out continue what they're doing. Expansive, direct football. The chances will come and be created. They just need to keep their heads up, look for the gaps and carry on playing essentially like they have been. This is an opportunity to further impose themselves on the Premier League. If one or both of them even score again, they're really going to start turning heads and prove that these young 20, 21 year old boys essentially really have no problem playing at this level. Now I don't think this will be a problem for Chelsea due to Frank Lampard's mentality but Chelsea do need to make sure they don't get complacent or concentration levels drop. It's all been terribly exciting at the beginning of the season with Frank Lampard, young players, exciting, playing for Chelsea and all this but they really need to keep focused and keep a professional attitude and demeanor throughout the whole season. Because if attention drops, teams like Sheffield will absolutely punish you and slap you when they get the chance. Obviously, there's the defensive issues at Chelsea at the moment. It will be really interesting to see how Chelsea perform if Rudiger is reintroduced to the side, especially in a game like this. Will that make Chelsea look more safe? and calm because for all the positives that have Chelsea displayed this season there is no sense or feeling of safe and calm. Chelsea always look and feel like they can concede at any time generally. So that would be interesting to see if Rudiger comes back in how the team will look and feel but also defending as a unit like I said when they are in the 4-3-3 formation it looks a bit safer. When they played at Carrow Road last weekend the second half did seem safer it did seem more secure. I know Norwich hit the crossbar uh, like late on in the game and that was a sweaty moment but generally in open play Chelsea did dominate a bit better and they looked more solid defensively. Also Chelsea need to look out for opposition forwards running the channels and splitting defenders. McGoldrick and Robinson might be looking to do so. Chelsea need to try and play a high line but basically play on the right side of these forwards and make sure that they don't get in behind. But generally, Chelsea look like they're moving in the right direction in terms of 
energy distribution throughout 90 minutes because it did look like they were going to have burnout issues but they look like their energy levels are plateaued better throughout the whole game rather than burning out in 20 minutes and dropping concentration and that was evident in the second half against Norwich City they basically took control of the game in the second half and did more of a professional performance it's basically resting in possession as well if you're the better side you need to keep the ball this is what teams like Manchester City do they keep possession and they rest in possession and conserve energy so with all that said I'm going to do a school prediction I do think Chelsea are going to win I do worry for Chelsea if about keeping a clean sheet. I mean, Sheffield's shown they can score goals. Chelsea have shown that they're still defensively frail. I think if Antonio Rudiger comes back in and it works well and he doesn't need time to adapt or the partnership works well, I think Chelsea can keep a clean sheet. And I'm going to say... 3-0. Now, that might be ambitious if a settled team like Leicester is only just winning 2-1. But I feel like at home at Stamford Bridge... I don't know, I feel like the atmosphere will be good and Chelsea are maybe due a result that really says, look, we've arrived, the young players have arrived. So, might be a bit ambitious. Obviously, we'd take the three points regardless, but I'm going to say 3-0. Sheffield fans, get in the comments if we lose next week. <laughs> Anyway guys, that's the end of my preview. What do you think? Get down in the comments. I want your thoughts and opinions on the game. I want your school predictions actually. Am I too ambitious with 3-0? Be a realist. Get down in the comments and let me know your school prediction. If you have enjoyed this content today, please do like the video because that helps me out a lot. And why not subscribe if you are new? Also, you guys can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That is at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to this game on the weekend so I probably won't be able to do an instant reaction on Saturday. I'll try and do a match review on Sunday. But you guys, enjoy the football, and I will see you later.